What's going on? Hey, y'all see your boy in the suit? I, I can still fit it. My neck ain't get too big. I typically don't like these collars that button up, but that's a whole nother thing. I had a reason to actually put on a suit today to do my attorney thing. And you know what I thought? I said, I'm going to make a few videos in this suit just because I got on the damn suit. So if you see a few videos with me in the same suit, now it's all filmed on the same day, just different topic. So let's talk about it. We are gonna tackle the age old question, question, the age old question, I can't even talk. <laughs> I just finished something that well, I was all professional. Now I'm on the channel, I'm all fumbling and bumbling my words. I'm Y'all want me to do this video professionally? In today's video, we're going to address the age old question. Is your primary residence an actual investment or a liability? We have a lot of conflicting people, experts in the particular finance subject matter area who are just conflicted on this thought process. A lot of people say it's an investment because it increases your net worth. Then you have those Grant Cardone types who say a personal residence is a liability because all it does is eat money out of your pocket. Both of those statements are true, but today we're gonna to address which one is actually legitimate according to DFD. Y'all stay tuned, let's get it. What's going on? I'm attorney Marcus. <laughs> What's going on? I'm Marcus, you're at the channel of the Debt Free Dad where we are talking finances. What's going on? I'm attorney Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I'm Marcus. You're the channel of the Debt Free Dad, where we're talking finances, financial takes, financial topics, financial current events, attorney reactions, and I'm letting y'all know what we have going on in the household of the Debt Free Dad. As my family is on the path to financial freedom and becoming first generation millionaires. Remember, financial freedom is different for everybody. Got to throw the disclaimer out. I am a licensed attorney in multiple jurisdictions but that is not relevant because I'm not your attorney. So if you're looking for legal or financial advice, seek a professional in your area. Let's dive in. Okay, primary residence. A lot of people, lifelong dream, and throughout, you know, as far as I can remember, one of the American dreams has been to get the house with the white picket fence and the minivan and the 2.5 kids, and I think the 0.5 kid is a child of a, either a small child or a pet, I don't know, it could be either or, but for so long, society has sold the dream of owning property, owning property, getting residential real estate, and there are a lot of data points to point that residential real estate, your residential real estate, your, your home, your primary home that you live in, your primary residence is a key factor in building wealth. There's actually studies out there that show that people who have a primary resident that they actually own or have a mortgage on have a higher net worth than their counterparts, have a higher net worth than their counterparts who are in the same age and overall income bracket. So there are some truths there, but we have to talk about it. Is your primary residence an actual asset? Is it an investment? Well, there are a few views, let's talk about it. People who believe that your primary resident is not an asset, they do for they do so for a few reasons. One, hey, we know they do so for a few reasons. One, we know that home values historically go up. So if you have a primary residence and you've been living in it anywhere from five to seven years, it's a very strong likelihood that that property has appreciated and the value of that property is worth more than what you pay for it. So you got one side who says, hey, that's an appreciating asset. But the counter argument to that is, hey, you don't even really realize the gains and the value from your property increasing unless you sell the property. So until you sell the property, all of those gains are just numerical gains written on a sheet of paper somewhere in your net worth statement, but they don't bring any real value to your bank account. And I'm going to say I actually agree with that statement just in a vacuum. In addition, people who don't think that it's an appreciating asset, they don't think that your primary resident is investment, they also have the belief that you're paying a mortgage every month. You have to do repairs. And anybody who's been watching this channel, y'all know that it seems like every, <laughs> every 60 or 90 days, I'm doing a video about an emergency fund, a repair I had to make, whether it's the faucet, whether it's the post to the patio, whether it's the, the HVAC guy who came down there 
and he underestimated the job and his he was like 70 and his ass almost got stuck in the attic trying to mess with the HVAC system to the third floor. No matter what it is, there's always some cost associated with it. So if you're a homeowner, you're buying a home and you're not factoring in those costs, all you're going to end up doing is kicking yourself in the ass later because it costs a grip to own a home. So those are some of the, the views of people who say that a home isn't an asset. Now, here is the DFD point of view on this. Bottom line, don't not watch the rest of this video, but I do think that your primary residence is an asset. First, we're just going to go with the basic definition of a net worth statement. To identify your net worth, you have to have your liability, you have to have all of your valuable assets, and then you do some math, and hopefully your assets outweigh your liabilities. Well, that's always true or most times true when it comes to your primary residence. Okay. So I, I definitely tend to put it in that asset category. The other thing is, and this is from a, th th this is from a, I guess, a, I'm thinking a little bit outside of the box here, but if you go apply for a loan and all of these things, they're going to look at your debt to income ratio and something that's factored into that is what you're paying for your mortgage. So because your ability to actually get credit extended to you to potentially make moves where you're purchasing other assets and that like a Gucci bag or something like that is contingent on your actual mortgage payment. Because of that, I think it really makes sense for it to be in that category. Think about it. A lot of people who are first generation millionaires have a significant portion of their net worth tied up in their primary residence. So for me, I'm putting it as an actual asset. I think as an asset, I think it's unequivocal. Um, but the other thing is, I think your primary residence has a little bit of what I call uh, me value to it as well. And, and I told somebody this and you all let me know what you think. Let's say I buy a house for $300,000. I buy a house, $300,000. I got a mortgage. I'm paying on it. A year go by. I owe $285,000 after two years. I owe $285,000. Let's say the market is in a downturn, which the property market looks like is in a downturn. And the property value of that home, my primary residence goes from $300,000. You think it would go up. It goes down to $250,000. And here I am. I owe $285,000. Now, of course, I'm upside down, I'm underwater on the mortgage, but in those situations, it really won't make a difference to me because the payment that I'm paying monthly at $300,000, because the payment that I'm paying monthly for a $300,000 house is something that I already uh, broke down in my budget as something that I can afford. So even if the value, if the value of my house right now was cut in half, I honestly wouldn't care because one, I'm not selling it anytime soon. Two, I'm not going to get any second mortgage or borrow the equity out of my home. And three, the home has an intrinsic value to me. To me, I can afford the payment because I broke those numbers down early on. So the home is worth it because it's where my family is. So there's definitely unique ways to look at if your primary residence is an asset or a liability. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Do y'all fall in the your primary resident is an asset class or your primary resident is really a liability because you're coughing out money every month. If you enjoyed this video, hey, make sure you check out the video on the screen. If you want to see more of me in the suit, y'all <laughs> let me know in the comments. As always, take care. Hey, love y'all. Peace.